Jeff, I know you're excited for this introduction. So just just so we're clear, we they played the disclaimer again that the views of of us is not something that they're proud of. I guess. Do you think it's because of our yeah, guest? I, yeah, I think it's our guest. I, I think right now we have Keith Pompey on, so we need to have a disclaimer that the views of Keith Pompey, which I'm sh- I have a, an idea of what he's about to express, <laughs> are not ones that we share. That Keith, you, how you doing? Don't say we. That <laughs> hey, you I, I share. I thought they were talking about Michigan football or something. <laughs> See exactly. <laughs> I knew exactly where you were going to go with this. That's so I just I, thought, I was like, wow. I hear you've been wow. blo- I hear you've been blowing up with score p- predictions, Keith. You. Uh, uh, you don't think that Michigan's going to play well in that ball game? I think they'll win the first one, but I think they'll get blown out in the national championship. Wait, hold on a second. I can go scroll back through my text and find one where you said that Michigan's going to lose by 15 to TCU. Where I said what? You Me said. Yeah, there you go. So I, I I think that that was a contract, and I think that you now have to bet me <laughs> and give me 15 points. <laughs> Keith, he's so nah, desperate I, now. He just doesn't I want know. you to trash he's Michigan. <laughs> like seven points or, or he, three points. Man, I just. All, all, all right. So look, see how he's backtracking there? So you just go to the why, Sixers. Why, stuff. Why, don't, why, don't, why don't we talk a little Sixers? Something maybe you know a little bit about. I'll How's that? Points. I'll give you 10 points. I'll give you 10. You'll give me 10 points. All right, deal. We'll work out the, we'll work out the parameters of the bet next week. Oh, this is okay. good stuff. It's 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 out there now. All right, Keith. We'll we'll set up the parameters <laughs> of your deal after the show. At fifteen and twelve, the Sixers are in fifth place in the East. Uh they got the Warriors coming in tonight. Well, sort of the Warriors. Some of the Warriors. <laughs> they won't have a lot of guys out there. Uh talk to us about what we're seeing out of the Sixers right now. This is their fourth game on what the seventh game homestand before they hit the road forever. You know, it it's it, it's one of those things where, you know, well, oh, we lost Keith. This homestand, you know, they lead the NBA in, in, in points. They're like second in the, you know, in second in assists. They're they're num- They also lead the league in three point percentage. Um, you know, they're they're playing well. I, I think a lot of it has to do with a their opponents, and b um, it has to do with the play of James Harden. I mean, you know, they've been playing well. I mean, Joel Embiid has been scoring a lot of points before. Uh, but it just seems like, you know, James Harden being a double-double machine, getting a lot of assists and getting other teammates involved, you know, has kind of spearheaded uh, the 76ers offense. So let's talk about James Harden for a second. Is this, is this just a case of a healthy James Harden, or is this also a case of maybe Doc Rivers getting in his ear and saying, look, we need a more traditional point guard if we're going to win? You know what I, I think is um, a, a little bit of the latter, but I also think is from James realizing, like, hey, I've been out a minute. You know, Joel was kind of sort of in, in the, on a tear. You know, I came back in the Houston game, and I tried to be ISO James, and I looked horrible. You know, uh, I, I kind of think that that's what it is where, you know, it comes a point in time when it's like how he came back last year and it's kind of like you see a guy dominating and you don't want to be the one to mess up the flow. Are they making a concerted effort to have him post up so that he can kick out to give some of these open shots for assists? I haven't really seen them do that much with him in the past. Yeah, they are. They are because and it's one of those things where let's try to take advantage of the mismatch, right? So here we are, like, so he's posting up. And, and, and in a perfect world, you, what you're going to think is that that's going to draw some attention. And when it draws attention, you got guys like George Niang um, at, in the, at the perimeter, and you just kick the ball out. And he did that three times last game where he, he had those posts up. He threw it out to George Niang three times. George Burry two threes, right? But then also, if, if they don't like uh, – because he's, you know, he's a big guard. So if, if, if you don't, like, uh, collapse on them, then what he'll try to do is he'll turn around and try to muscle you and get to the foul line or, or, or try to get an and one. But it just seems like, yeah, that's one of those things that they're trying to take advantage of, um, you know, more post substances. You know, one of the players that they've gotten this year who seems to be the most one of the most polarizing figures is P.J. Tucker. It, it's, okay. ju- it's hard to tell. You're there every day. It's hard for us to tell. Is P.J. Tucker 
a benefit or a negative when he's out on the court? You know, it, it, it's tough because, you know, P.J. is one of those guys that he, he basically goes unnoticed, right? But everyone says that oh, they, they love they, they love what he brings to the team. Um, I think that P.J.'s value is going to be more – He's going to be more valuable to the 76ers right now in a playoff series because it's going to be possession by possession. You know, the scoring is going to be lower. It's going to be more physical. And that's kind of sort of his game. But you are right. I mean, the thing is, you know, he has to make shots when he's out there. Like, And, again, I'm not saying he has to shoot the ball a lot. But when he does attempt these shots, you know, you, you, you do want them to fall as opposed to him, like, hitting the front of the rim and, and, and things like that. But he doesn't even take any shots. Well, you know what? He's been taking some of the last couple of games. You know, I, I think a lot of it is there was a point in uh, the season where he was out there and P.J. would be wide open. And it was kind of sort of like the Sixers were playing four-on-four four basketball. They wouldn't swing the ball his side. Actually, the ball will go the other way. But what I'm talking about now recently is, yeah, he's getting a couple shot attempts. He's just not making them, you know. And, and when you see that, that's when you really say, okay, PJ, I understand. Here I am, the guy, like, saying, hey, they need to get you more involved. But when you're missing the shots, you know, that's the problem that you have. Because, yeah, there was a point where he wasn't taking them. But now he's not making the ones that he is taking. Doc was asked the other day about Tyrese Maxey. He said whatever he has to do, he's nowhere near it. So I would say he's out at least, I don't know, at least a couple more weeks. What's the concern level on his recovery time? You know, I have a huge concern level on it. Like, I, as a guy that I um, chat with from time to time, he's not concerned at all. But to me, it's one of those things, if you're saying it's a foot injury and it's supposed to be three to four weeks and – you know, Doc saying he can't do he can't do a lot now. You know that's concerning to me. Secondly, you know it's, it's one of those things where this starting lineup, like the Sixers right now, have played what 28 games. The starting lineup has only been together um, for six games. That's it. So the longer it takes for him to come back, is the longer it's going to take for the 76ers to adjust and gel and become the unit that you want them to be. So to me, it's like, yeah, you may go ahead and win a couple games without him, but you still got to get the timing down with him. Everyone has to play together. So to me, that's where the problem is, you know. And But at the same time, a foot is something serious that you don't want to mess with. Um, so, yeah, it, to me, there's a lot of concerns with that while he's out, I guess you just have to assume he's not coming back. And if he comes back, then great. But in the meantime, how valuable has has uh, Tobias Harris become? Oh, man, Tobias has been great. Like, I think Tobias, you know, and, you know, some people are going to base it off of Joel saying, look at the points he scored. You know, look, look at what Melton has been able to do. You know, so they're going to give these guys credit. Look at Shake Milton, what he's been able to do. But you have to say, in my opinion, that Tobias has been the MVP of the first half of the season or this point. Because, you know, here's a guy who, who sacrificed his game. But then when they put him, but then when, you know, he's, but, but, but when everybody's went down, all the other guys went down, he's been the constant. You know, he might not have been the, the leading scorer, but he, he was always amongst the top three leading scorers. And not only that, top three in rebounds, top three in steals. You know, so he's been a guy who's been able to um, shine on both sides of the ball, and he carried them in, in a lot of help, carried them in a lot of those victories when they were under man. Yeah, and then look, he's shooting 41% from three in his, in his 11 games back since he's been back out there, and he's definitely played the role they need. A, a person I'm questioning what their role is right now is Paul Reed. When Joel Embiid was out, Paul Reed put in good minutes. Right now, it looks like he's back behind Montrez Harrell again. What is going on with that rotation? Uh, say, say it again. Can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. Paul Reed. It looks like he's behind Montrez. Yeah, I zoned out at that question, it, too. It looks like Paul Reed's <laughs> behind Montrez Harrell again, and I don't understand that because I don't understand how you're going to get the young guy experience to be ready in the playoffs if you need him, like we saw last year when somebody goes down, if you don't give him minutes now. 
Yeah, great question. Great question. Uh, you know, you know, I, I guess I didn't go to Michigan, so I didn't understand it. But at first, but anyway, that was a great wow. question. Any, anyway, anyway, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, nah. So anyway. this is what I think. I, I, I honestly think that 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 position can be a little frustrating or not frustrating, but that's one of those things where the coach doesn't have as much patience, right? So if you notice, like one week, one of them is playing very well and the other one doesn't get any minutes, right? And I think when you have a guy like Paul Paul Reed, like when MB doesn't – when MB plays, he's the backup. So he comes in and the last couple games, you know, he's been in foul trouble. He, he Like he, he's been making a little bit of mistakes. And I think what happens is Doc gets a little frustrated and like, oh, you're on the bench. Come on, Trez. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's where it is. But then what happens is let Trez start getting beat at the rim a couple of times, then all of a sudden we're going to see Paul Reed back out there. So it's like that one position is the one where these guys continue to get the quick hook. They just continue to get the quick hook. All right, now I'm going to ask the question, the woe is me question of the day and has nothing to do with Michigan. What what was Joel Embiid thinking? What, why is he out there saying that the Philadelphia fans want him traded? I mean, what's behind this? You know, it, it, it's weird because now an, 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 the guy, Jake Fisher, is a, I've known Jake since he was, what, in college, right? Good reporter. That's a long time ago, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, right. So <laughs> Jeff just taking shots back. He's very unhappy at your Michigan. Uh, of course, shots. I was a pit at the same time as him. So <laughs> yeah, no, right. So 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 anyway, so anyway, like it, it's one of those things where you know I, I feel like you know Joel says stuff, but when he says it, he's always chuckling. He's always laughing, and you're like, man, stop being, stop joking around. No, I'm serious. Ha 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 ha. Like one of those. So that's how it went down and apparently in their interview. Now, we've heard that before, the media people, but we like, come on, Joe. Like, nah, dude. Now, there are some people, let's be honest, there are some people now saying, can you win with Joel Embiid? Should you trade Joel Embiid? You can know, he stay and, healthy for a run? I mean, there's definitely yeah, people can, who ask the question, but to kind of yeah. throw a blanket on it and say, people want me traded is a little bit much. Exactly. Now, the thing is, the one thing I didn't understand is like, Joel, the timing of it coming out. Like now, again, I think he interviewed Joel a couple of days before the article came out. I, I think it was. But still, it just seems crazy for that to come out at the time when your team is on like a, a, a three game winning streak. You know what I'm saying? You won three games. You average 40 points during those games. Everyone in Philadelphia is showing you much love. And now this is what we got to read. So it just seems like the timing was extremely bad. And, and now I honestly believe, and when he said that to me at one point or, or to the rest of us, it was kind of sort of like, you know, when the team was winning without him. But now he's the guy. He's the guy. So, and, and, and then it's also one of those things where you can easily deny it and say, hey, I was joking. I was only saying. He puts so, up 53 and 12 on Sunday and the story on Monday and Tuesday is how he's talking about wanting to get out. I just it just surprises me. You know, it, it seems like he's matured as a player and then you still see these instances where where things come out and it's like why do you need the distraction now? Wow. You know what I mean? That, that that's a, it, it, it's just a joke. Like, I mean, I shouldn't call it a joke, but it's just bad timing, man. And and again, this is some of the things that people say about the organization. You know what I mean? It's like you can't get right. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you want to get right, but then there's always something like you take a step forward and then there's something to bring you back a step. All right. Well, let, let's talk Let's talk about the, the organization that has gotten it right for a long time, who they're playing tonight, the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, they're going to be without Steph Curry. What are you expecting to see tonight? A lot of bench players. You know what? It's crazy. <laughs> You expect to see the 76ers smack them, right? But this is also one of those games where the 76ers, like, let their guard down and it can be a little bit closer and more uncomfortable than what everybody thinks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, to me, that that's one of those things where, you know, you, you have to say to yourself, you're like, oops, I hope, I hope they, I hope they ha it take care of things. Now, last night, or yesterday I was talking to George Niang, talking to uh, Doc Rivers about it, and they're like, nah, we can't 
overlook this team. This is the Warriors. Like, this is the champions. But now you look at it, Gray Mines not playing. Clay is questionable. You know, uh, Wiggins isn't playing. He already, he's been out for a minute. Andre Iguodala hasn't played at all. But at the same time, they have Jordan Poole, a guy who could be an all-star if he was on a different team, right? You, you can, or at least a fringe all-star. So, you know, and if Clay plays, you know he's going to put up a lot of points. So I, I kind of think that, you know, the Sixers, they got to be careful tonight. I mean, they honestly, because if they lack focus, you know, this is one of those games they can slip. And the reason why I'm saying that is you guys have been following the Sixers and covering the Sixers for a while. Whenever we think that they have a rise is when stuff falls apart. So to me, they have to handle their business and prove that, you know, they're not like the teams that they were in the past, that when, when it was a gimme game, they, they lost the game or they gave up the gimme game. They've had a good start to the homestand. How important is it these next three games? I mean, they got a long, they got that Disney break lo- road trip coming up where they won't be home. Keith, you'll be traveling a lot in January with them. How important is it to kind of close it out strong here, close out the year at home so that they have that momentum, keep, keep it going as they start to get these players back, hopefully? Um, yeah, it, it, it is extremely important for them. Um, be, be, because not only just for that, to keep the momentum, you got to keep pace with the Knicks in Brooklyn. I mean, the Knicks won, what, you know, five straight, Brooklyn's you know, won eight of nine. They're 17 and 12 now. Nine. Yeah, won eight, won eight of nine. So it's not a matter of like, you know, hey, we want to keep this momentum going. Nah, we got to win. And when you look at it, you know, no offense, the, the, the Sacramento Kings have a winning record, right? Um, then the, the, uh, the Clippers have a winning record. The rest of these teams are struggling. So the 76ers need to come out here and get these wins. Because, you know, you look around the standings, if they lose, you know, and the, and the other two teams win, the Sixers can mess around and go from fifth to seventh quick, fast, in a hurry. You know what I mean? So, if one, and if they win, they still may end up, remain in fifth spot right now. Because I feel like, you know, they have to hold serve in these games. The Clippers game may be t- might be tough for them, but they need to continue to her- hold serve in these games because that Christmas Day game, at first we were all laughing and joking, like, oh, they got to play the Knicks. Uh, what kind of game is that? That could be a key game right now, a key early early season game. Because, you know, if, if they both keep winning, they're both going to be, what, either fourth or fifth or, 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 or fifth or sixth in the standing. So that's going to be an important game because, like you said, once they go out west, it's going to get a whole lot tougher. All right, before you take your parting shot, um, explain how the NBA is going to fix what happened with the Nets the other day. I believe the Nets sat their top eight players. And yes, they still won the game. But how do you, if you're going to find a team a whopping, what, $25,000, what's going to prevent teams from doing this again? Uh, nothing. If you're going to find them a whopping 25000 uh, nothing at all. I mean... You know, you're, that's like, you know, giving them, finding a millionaire, what, $25? Mm-hmm. You know, like you find a billionaire, 25000 Nah, that's not going to prevent any teams from doing it. And teams are always going to do it. I mean, you know, it's funny. Who was it? Uh, a couple of, like, didn't also, didn't the Brooklyn Nets, they got, yeah, they got fined for, for like, you know, not disclosing what, what happened on, you know, the media, uh, excuse me, the injury report. I mean, there's a lot of this stuff going on nowadays. And it's all because of, you know what, everybody wants to rest their players. The, the, the focus is having everyone healthy for the playoffs, you know, and, and until you raise those fines, it's not going to happen. And the same way, just like players are going to, you know, media members want to talk to guys pregame. And if, if a player's making a max deal and if he doesn't want to talk, there's nothing saying he has to because, you know, the league isn't going to want to find him initially. And when they do find him, it's going to be, what, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. To me, that's a lot of money, but to those guys, it's not. Well, we'll definitely look forward to reading it in the Philadelphia Inquirer, following you at Pompeii on Sixers, Locked on Sixers, 
Everywhere else you can read Keith Pompey. Keith, thanks for always giving us some time. And for the coverage, uh, go ahead and take your shot at Jeff. No, nah, Jeff, I mean, I hope y'all do win in the first round because if y'all lose to TCU, it's going to look bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, I, think you, but, I think you want Michigan to win because I, you'll, you'll have so much time that you will spend giving me a hard time you won't be able to cover the Sixers. Uh, we will uh, follow up on that uh, bet that you and Jeff have <laughs> and inform the audience next week. Keith, Keith, thanks so much for your time, man. Go Ohio State, brother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh wow. Jeff, he close with that. <laughs> that one hurts for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jeff, we got about two minutes till we hit the break. Maybe from now on, we, we hang up on him and just don't say just goodbye. Before, just before we let right, him Right, I think that might be the answer. Get the knowledge and then get out.